Hi, this is Ken from Rocket Family, WK, uh, Rocket Family KML. Uh, today I'm going to go over shock cords. Uh, again, this is my take on how to do shock cords. Remember, uh, the only real hard set rules are the rules that the NAR put out, like uh, no major structural mineral parts, only used to prove engines, launch proof sites, stuff like that. Uh, everything else is what you prefer, what you can handle, your skill level, what your budget can handle. What can you afford to do? Uh, if I could afford to fiberglass everything, I would fiberglass everything. I can't, so I've got different ways that uh, I keep within my budget and do different things. So shock cords. Uh, I hear lots of talk about different shock cords. We've all seen the Estes rubber band. Uh, it's a great little way to do rockets, and it's a great way to put a little ding in your rocket. Um, I don't like the rubber bands anymore. I haven't used them in quite some time. You get uh, what's called the Estes smile or the Estes ding. And the smile is where the nose cone pops off, comes back, and hits the side of the body tube and leaves a little crescent smile. Or pops off, comes back, and hits the top of the body tube and dents it. So that's where they get the Estes ding and the Estes smile. Uh, the next one that you see a lot of people use, and you hear people talking about this a lot, they talk about the elastic, the sewing elastic and it's the thread coated elastic, elastic like what you would find in your underwear. Uh, at the Rocket Club I'm a member of they say elastic belongs in your underwear so keep it there. It's kind of a cold way of saying it um, but uh, this does have applications in, in rocketry. I just don't think it's necessarily a good thing for shock cords. Uh, if you're going to use elastic for a shock cord you need to make it three to four times the length of the rocket. The reason for that is we don't really want it to fly out and snap back. We want the little bit of spring there just to absorb a little bit of shock, not a whole lot of shock. The problem you have with snapback is you're going to cause damage. So if it's long, it's not going to snap back. So three to four times the length of the body. Now the issue I have with using elastic is it does deteriorate faster sometimes than the Estes rubber bands. Uh, this actually isn't flame retardant to the best of my knowledge and you can see I've got soot damage, it's got stiff, it's lost its spring, I've actually got here where it's, it's got burn marks and it's actually burned, I can see the rubber bands. That's waiting to fail. And since that, this shock cord, I actually launched the rocket originally with a rubber band shock cord, replaced it to the elastic one at the recommendation of somebody else. Then I found out about Kevlar thread and Kevlar string. I replaced it to that. So uh, yeah, it, I, this is going to have to be changed again. So that's the second time I've changed a shock cord on a rocket. I don't like changing things on a rocket. How many times can I stick a shock cord mount inside the tube before I've taken up too much room in the tube? Or it's starting to restrict things coming out, whether it be the streamer or the parachute. So we need to avoid that. So I've switched to Kevlar string. Kevlar string is really good. Um, it's durable. It's naturally flame proof or fire resistant so I don't have to worry about it catching on fire. This is my daughter's Comanche 3. Um, and because it is naturally flame resistant I don't have to worry about it burning up down past with wadding it doesn't get to it or anything like that it's just a great way now I do tie a knot double knot on the top and then I leave the tag in I leave a half inch tag in I wrap tape around that tag in just to make it look clean and nice uh, this will dull up scissors because it is Kevlar Kevlar is very tough so uh, don't use your mom's scissors now Kevlar string this is number 300 Kevlar string I got from Apogee Components and you can buy this stuff by the yard, by the foot, by the mile. comes on a little card spool they send you it on so it's really neat. Um, Kevlar spring does not have any elasticity to it. It does not have any give to it. So if you have a short cord it will definitely cause damage and zipper your rocket. Now, of course we all know a zipper is where it tears down the tube. So how do we prevent having a zipper on the rocket? Well we take our Kevlar string and we make it 
four to five times the length of the rocket. If you have a 10 inch rocket, you need a 40 to 50 inch piece of Kevlar string. It's a lot of string, but you're gonna find out that you have a lot less damage to your rocket and a lot less troubles all around when you use it. Now, you can mount it just like you normally would in a rocket with uh, the same trifold piece of paper. Uh, you can do a loop of Kevlar and epoxy it onto the body tube inside a, you know, an inch or two down and then loop the, uh, another piece of Kevlar through and tie it in there. And the way to make sure that you're getting your Kevlar um, and being able to replace it is do what I call a slip loop. We're going to go around our Kevlar string. This is the going into the rocket. This is what's coming out. And we're going to tie it to itself. We're not going to tie it to the piece. We're going to tie it to itself. So that when we pull, it slips. Now you would do a double knot, obviously. I did a single because I don't want to waste any of my Kevlar string. And then you can cinch it down in the bottom of the rocket. When it comes time to replace it, you can take a hook or something and hook it and pull it up and pull it out. So it is something that you can replace and I have to keep uh, putting in more mounts. If you do the paper mount, you're going to have to put in another paper mount. So it all depends on how you want to do it. Um, how do you stuff 50 inches of Kevlar string into a rocket? That's the next question. It's not hard at all. If you have a crochet hook, it's real easy. If you don't have a crochet hook, go get one, or you're going to be doing this by finger. It's not too hard. All we're going to do is we're going to take our rocket. Let me zoom back out. Well, I'll just put it right here where you can see it. We're going to take our rocket, and we're going to take the end that's closest to the rocket. We're going to make a loop. If you have a crochet needle, you're going to take the crochet needle or hook and pull it through and grab, the, grab a loop. Then you're going to pull another hook through the loop. Then you're going to pull another hook through the loop. So you're just making loops or daisy chaining one after the other. Now if you're doing it with a crochet needle, it's a lot tighter. You can see that will fit into the rocket quite easily. That will tuck in as a bundle. And then when it comes time for launching, zoom back out here, do a couple more real quick. Comes time for launching, it deploys the chute, boom, 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 untangles. It unloops really, really quick. So it's a great way to be able to uh, put your shock cord into your body tube with a long shock cord and not have problems doing it. So again, the main things to remember, if you're using underwear elastic or sewing elastic, three to four times the body length, minimum. If you're using Kevlar string, four to five times the body length, minimum. Uh, make sure you securely put this in the rocket. When I do the, the fold over piece of paper, I, I epoxy it. I may glue it with white glue or wood glue into the tube, but then I'm gonna put epoxy over the top. I tie a small knot in the end of the cord, just a regular knot right in the end of the cord, put a dot of super glue there to reinforce it and then trim off the long tab so it's just a knot at the end with a little teeny tab. Now that's going to be harder to pull through the paper and the glue. So that's another way of making sure you have a good secure shock cord into your rocket. So three to four times the length of the rocket for elastic, four to five times the length for the Kevlar thread. Uh, how do we prevent zippers? Make sure we're deploying at apogee, not going up, not coming down as we arch over. When the rocket's moving the slowest, we're less likely to cause that zipper problem. So that's the only other thing I'm gonna say. Three to four times for elastic, four to five times for Kevlar. Deployment should be at apogee. Thanks for watching, have a great day.